Welcome. I'm Jim Tarver. I'm the medical director of the Advanced Lung Disease Program at Advent Health Orlando, and welcome to the second episode of our series about pulmonary hypertension under pressure. To my left is Dr. Stacy Mandras, who is the medical director of the Advanced of uh, Pulmonary Hypertension Program. To her left is Dr. Jason Stansberry, pulmonologist and pulmonary hypertension specialist in our program. And new this week, we have the marvelous Melissa Wilson, doctor of nursing practice, who serves as the operations director and primary coordinator for the pulmonary hypertension program. So welcome everybody to round two. So in our last episode, we talked a little bit about the role of a program versus individual providers in the, in the care for pulmonary hypertension. We also talked about accreditation, and I wanted to revisit the accreditation process for pulmonary hypertension programs. And it's actually very helpful to have Melissa here because in our program, she was the primary driver of our accreditation process. So Melissa, could you tell us a little bit about accreditation, its importance, um, your role in the Pulmonary Hypertension uh, Association in terms of overseeing accredited uh, practices and what the role of coordinators are in PH programs. Um, thank you for having me today and um, allow me to talk about the accreditation process. The accreditation I feel is in a very important uh, piece to the care of a patient with pulmonary hypertension, particularly that uh, there aren't any board certification for physicians, nurse practitioners, or nurses uh, to be able to take care of these patients. So when they're trying to find someone who understands this very rare disease, it's really important that we have some type of criteria to help them understand where they're getting their care and the benefits of the program. And that's why I feel accreditation is important because it helps define what that program is going to offer. It moves beyond just the clinical team, so beyond just the physicians, um, but understanding what that support team looks like, the coordinators, the office staff, the hospital capabilities, as well are all important pieces of it. As a coordinator, our roles are uh, quite diverse when you look across the board, uh, those of us who work in pulmonary hypertension. Some are nurses, some are respiratory therapists, some are nurse practitioners, some are PAs. On our particular program, like you stated, I'm a nurse practitioner and the program coordinator and the rest of our support team is exceptionally important to meeting the criteria that it takes. The nurse really does an important job with doing the education of the patient, supporting the patient through their journey, uh, their diagnosis, their treatments. The medical assistants are exceptionally important in actually obtaining the medications because there is a process to get these meds. Um, and these meds are very important and vital to our patients' lives. So they're very well versed in understanding how to navigate insurance companies, obtain prior authorizations. If it doesn't get approved, how do we get those patients to remain or get on therapy, whether that be grant assistance or patient assistance programs through the individual pharmaceutical companies. That is an important role of the medical assistance in an accredited program. As well as the nurse practitioner's roles are, of course, seeing those patients, supporting the patients, um, being part of that healthcare team as a bridge between the doctors and the nurses as well. And the other important pieces are the social aspect of it too, having the support group um, as being part of that. And research is exceptionally important. And it's exceptionally important, not that we just look at it as having a number of studies available to treat different patients on uh, different types or subgrouping of pulmonary hypertension, but also for advancing the field. And they look at that in terms of publications and manuscript writings and submitting um, abstracts and presenting at conferences. And that's something that's important, not just for the physicians, but also for the coordinators as well, too, to be doing. Pharmacy is exceptionally another piece, an important piece of all of this, um, having pharmacy support to help uh, with dosing and also with contributing to the overall program and safety. And I think a part that uh, should not be overlooked is the importance of the hospital. Uh, the hospital training, the staff that's taking care of them, where are the patients going to be housed within your institution. It is a very rigorous process to obtain accreditation and um, it's one that I, I really support because it's also an external look from another group of experts who practice within the field to say this program offers you a well-rounded experience as a patient that if you were beyond what your therapy can do for you that we're able to offer things like transplant or pulmonary thrombo or we're able to um, 
support you through palliative care and all those other support services that you need. So many important points that you brought up. And Stacy, as you said, it really does take a, vill a village to take care of these really complex patients. Thank you, Melissa, for going over that with us. And I look forward to the next episode of Under Pressure.